It's all yours, Dad says. Your grandfather kept every letter he ever received. You're the writer. Maybe there's a story in there somewhere. I didn't really know Dad's parents. I entered their lives in 1962. Separated by distance, my early memories are vague, tied to photographs. When I was six, their health deteriorated. Fifteen years of just visits to the nursing home to see Manny, to the veterans hospital to see Will. So here it is, just a box, a banker's box. For days, it sits atop my dining room table. I sift through telegrams, postcards, greeting cards, letters. I sort, draw timelines, read, reread, and reread again. I become enmeshed in the world of Manny and Will, riding the ebb and flow of their written words. From Manny to Will, October 1932. What I want is you, and very badly at that. So I went in to console myself by peeking at Hugh sound asleep. He's very, very lovely, Willie, and I'm longing for the day when the three of us are alone and able to love each other every day, all to pieces and back again. I'm slowly becoming cracked in the head for love of my darling Will. Is this my grandmother? Just oozing with love? She wasn't much of a hugger. I remember her as being rather serious, practical, matter of fact. Then I find it, a letter dated December 10th, 1933, the first anniversary of Hughes, their firstborn, of his sudden death. My hands are shaking, tears cascading down my cheeks. I have to sit down. Manny to Will. Your beautiful flowers arrived. I was feeling rather low, but realized that it was useless and did my best to get over it for the time being anyway. Rossi drove me up to the cemetery this afternoon. It was below zero and oh my, what a cold, bleak place. The trees and shrubs were laden down with snow and a nice chilly blast was blowing. However, I was so glad I went no matter what the weather was like. So starkly real to me now. I'll never know how many tears she shed or the number of days she spent in the depths of despair. I wish I'd been there. To comfort her. World War II comes along. Manny writes often to Will of Dad and his sister Janet of their endearing behaviors. Manny to Will, November 1942. Sandy, I'm sure, would be late for school this a.m. He puddled through his breakfast, finished under protest, then had a session accompanied by much singing in the bathroom. Finally, he went off brandishing a wooden tomahawk. I only hope he doesn't crown someone with it. It's a mean looking affair which I bought one year from the Indian stall at Portage. Jan is just the opposite in the morning, eats in a business-like fashion, and nearly has a fit if she leaves after 8.20. Oh, and when I near the end of each letter, I brace myself for a giggle. Listen, here's a short one I omitted in my last letter, she writes to Will. Said one ovary to the other, I see we're in for a musical evening. Here come a couple of nuts pushing an organ. I'm literally laughing out loud. I'm in the house by myself laughing out loud. Even when describing the first aid classes she's teaching for the war effort, she finds humor. Tonight I have a mixed class, she writes, and am anticipating a near riot when the tryout of artificial respiration takes place. Then I find another letter about Hugh. He was born October 15, 1932. Ten years later, in early November 1942, Manny writes to Will. Your very lovely and thoughtful bouquet arrived on October 15th. I was so glad to have you remember. When I awoke this morning, I couldn't help wondering what Hugh at 10 would have been. Probably quite like Sandy, only a bigger frame. I may be queer, but each year I try to picture him in relation to Jan and Sam. Her voice, sad or happy, it calms me. I remember one night in particular, I was lying in bed. I turned to my husband. You're gonna think this is so weird, but I feel like Manny's here in the room with me. I feel like I know her and I actually feel love for her. I love her, I truly love her. 
This is not just a box. This is a gift.